Okay, exercise 8C. It says uh, the sum of two real numbers, X and Y is nine. Okay, now there is no differentiation going to take place over here. So you have to start by saying, okay, uh, the sum of two real numbers, X and Y is nine. So you will say, okay, X plus Y is going to be equal to nine. Express Y in terms of X. Again, your algebra over here, okay? So you would say, okay, then in this A part, your Y is going to be nine minus X. Next, it says in the B first part that um, given that P is equal to X square Y, P is equal to X square Y, write down an expression in 4P in terms of X. A very good question and in fact, a very good start to this topic. So he's asking you people to write this P in terms of X. So you have already written your Y in terms of X. So you substitute your Y into this equation. So that would be X square into nine minus X. Now this will be giving you nine X square minus X cubed. That is your uh, P purely in terms of X, okay? And then he says, find the minimum value of P. That is the second part. We have to find the minimum value of P. Achha. Now you will be uh, knowing that why did you had to write this P purely in terms of X or maybe in terms of Y. The thing is when you have to find the stationary value of P, you will be finding DP by DX or maybe DP by DY. But your P is already in terms of two variables over here, X squared and then Y. Okay, then you will be confused that will you be differentiating with res respect to X or with respect to Y. So that is why using all this given information and your algebraic skills, you will be writing your equation in terms of one variable. So has he has himself guided you to get an equation, uh, which is like, you know, P in terms of X. Okay, so now we can find DP by DX from here. Okay, so this is your DP by DX that will give you 18 X minus three X square. And you will straight away put that equal to zero because you are interested, you are given a task to find the stationary value of P. So whenever you have to find the minimum, maximum stationary turning point, so you will have to put your first derivative equal to zero, okay? So let's do that. So I can take three X common from here. So I have six minus X equal to zero. Please mention that one of the values is zero, the other value is X equal to six, okay? So uh, if you put that um, zero into this equation, this P, you get two values of P. P is either going to be zero or P is going to be, when you put that equal to six, so that is going to be 108. Okay, that is 108. Now, uh, let's see which one is a minimum value. So you, you need to have the second derivative, okay? So this is gonna be D2P by DX square. So this is going to be 18 minus six X, okay? Now at X equal to zero, your second derivative is positive, okay? So that means P equal to zero is the minimum value. I'm not interested to go and check that six as well. I only have to find the minimum value. So that is, oh, he was asking the maximum, oh, sorry. So P equal to zero is the minimum value. So then it's understood P equal to, uh, what was that? 108 would be the maximum value. You can check that as well by putting that six into the second derivative. So that would be, uh, in that case, it would be 18 minus 36, uh, right? and that will be negative. Also, when you, but you are keeping on adding these things. If you put, like, if you people want to know, okay, um, the second derivative is positive or negative. Look at this. You don't need to do all that calculation. If you have an idea, okay, hi, R, 18 minus 36 is negative. There is no need to go on to write the next step. Okay, we only need to know okay, if the second derivative is positive or negative. That's it. Okay. Achha, now, can you try that C part? Try that C part and then I take you to the question number two. Okay, let, let's do that second question. It says a piece of wire of length 40 cm is bent to form a sector of a circle with radius r 
and sector angle theta radian as shown in the diagram, the total area enclosed by the shape is A. So it says express theta in terms of R. So if this is R, this is R, I can write this as R theta, okay? Because um, we have the formula that S equal to R theta. Now, uh, the total uh, length of this piece of wire is 40 cm. So I should be saying, okay, then the perimeter of all this sector should be equal to 40. So we would say, uh, for the first part that R plus R plus R theta, that is equal to 40, okay? So this is gonna be two R plus R theta, that is equal to 40. And your R theta is 40 minus two R and your theta is going to be um, 40 minus two R over R. So, so this is your theta. Now you'll find out the reason why he's asking you to write theta in terms of R. That is your B part, okay? In, in your B part, it says show that the area is this, okay? So, you know, the formula for the area is half R squared theta. Area is equal to half R squared theta. Now, R and theta, these are both the variables. And if you look at uh, the C part, you have to find the value of R for which there is a stationary value of A. So that means you need to find dA by dR and you need to put that equal to zero. So for that purpose, this equation uh, where A is in terms of R and theta, this should be purely in terms of R, okay? So you need to pick this theta from here and you substitute into this equation here. So this is gonna be half R squared times 40 minus 2 R over R. So you see this R is canceled by the square and then we multiply them inside half R into 40 will give you 20 R and half R into minus 2 R will give you minus R square. Okay? Ajay you must be uh, mentally preparing yourself for the situations where he will not be giving you this hint. Please look at this. If you see the older papers, this hint will always be there. But in the, you know, the later papers, he's directly going to ask you, okay, giving all this situation, he will ask you to find the stationary value of A. So you must know that you have to do all this working yourself. Okay, <clears throat> so then you go on to the C part and you know that since you have to find the stationary value of A, so you will be putting dA by dR equal to zero. So dA by dR is going to be 20 minus two R and that is equal to zero. This gives you R equal to 10. We are just getting one value of R. So that is the answer to the part C. It says determine the magnitude and nature of this, of this stationary value. Okay, no problem. So it means you need to put this value of R into this area over here so that you can determine its magnitude. So let's put this R into this A, okay? So then for the magnitude of this area, it is gonna be 20 into 10 minus uh, this 10 squared. So you get 100, okay? And now you have to tell that what is its nature. For that purpose, you will have to find the second derivative, D to A by DR squared. And that is going to be minus two and which is negative. This means, this means, this implies that uh, area equal to 100 is the maxima or the maximum area, okay? So this ends question number two here. Do you have any question from this question? No? Okay, so let's then try the, the later questions. Okay, so now you know what to do. You might get harder questions, but you know what is a method to solve all these problems. So give them a try, then I'll tell you if there is any problem. Okay, fourth question. The diagram shows a rectangle A, B, C, D, where A, B is 20. So A, B is 20. So this means this length is going to be 20 minus 2x. And this length over is going to be 20 minus 4x, okay? And it says BC is 16x. So this means this one over here is going to be 16 minus 2x. 
and this length is 16 minus x. So since it is a rectangle, so I should say, okay, all of these angles are going to be the right angles, okay? So it says express the area of this PQRS in terms of x. So area is basically going to be the area of the whole rectangle minus the area of these four triangles here, okay? So for this A part, area is going to be, first we find the total area. So this length is given as 20 and this length is given as 16. So the total area is going to be 20 times 16 and then minus. Let's find the areas of the all these four triangles, okay? So I start from this, like, you know, from this point A over here, this is going to be half into 2x into 20 minus 2x plus uh, this triangle with the, this vertex be here, half into x into 2x, half into x into 2x. Then we have plus half into um, 16 minus x into 20 minus 4x. And then we have half into 4x into 16 minus 2x. So do you see how much algebra is, you know, involved, you know, in this topic, okay? So next we have, um, okay. So let's simplify this. This is going to be 320 minus, okay. Just cancel by this. So I have 20x minus 2x squared, okay. Then I have plus x squared. Okay, if I take a two common from here, so that would become, this would become, I'm just trying to skip a step from here. This will be two into 10 minus two x, right? and this two will be canceled by this two. So we have 16 into 10, that is plus 160. 16 into minus two x is minus 32 x. Then I have minus 10x, then I have plus 2x squared. And then for this last one, this is plus 32. And then we have minus 4x, 32x, and then we have minus 4x squared, okay? So finally we have, okay, so this is your A. Can someone please check the, uh, the, this expression if this is really correct? Okay, next it says given that x can vary, find the value of x for which area is minimum. So guys, for the B part, um, we need to find this dA by dx and we need to put that equal to zero. So that is six x minus 10, that is equal to zero. So your x is going to be 10 over six, that is five over three. Okay. So we have to determine if this area is a minimum. So I need to find the D2 by DX squared. That is going to be six, which is positive. Therefore, area equal to, you put this five by three into this area. What do you get? So whatever is this area is, is 151 whole two by three. Okay, is the minimum area. So that is how you complete this solution here. Okay, uh, fifth question. The diagram shows the graph of this, okay. OPQR is a rectangle with area A, the point O is the origin, P lies on the X axis, R on the Y axis, Q has the coordinates X comma Y. Okay, we have to show that the area, now this area is basically the area of this rectangle, okay? So I'll be assuming this point to be X, in fact, this is given as X comma Y. So guys, this means 
the length of this rectangle or the width is going to be x and this is going to be your y and remember this y can be obtained in terms of x from this given equation can i say that 2y is equal to 30 minus 3x and then my y is going to be uh, 15 minus 3 by 2x okay so now you see how i am going to write this area here so area of this rectangle is going to be x times y okay so this is going to be x times 15 minus 3 by 2x so this area is 15x minus 3 over 2 x square it is given that x can vary okay so find the stationary value of a and determine its nature so we need to do three things first of all we need to find the da by dx and put that equal to 0 that is going to be 15 minus 3 by 2 into 2x that is equal to 0 twos are cancelled so we get x equal to 5 you put that into or you can find the second derivative first after we have uh, you have got this value of x from the first derivative then you are left with two tasks one is to find the second derivative the second is to find the magnitude of that stationary value so you can do anything uh, like you know in, in any order so d2y by dx square is going to give us um it was 15 minus 3x so this will be minus 3 which is a negative value therefore area equal to 15 into 5 minus 3 over 2 into 5 square what do you what do you get this area as hmm? okay is the maximum area that is the maximum area. okay that's it from the days